You are listening to the IoT for All Media Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the IoT for All podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Chacon, and on today's episode, we have Robert Kowalik, the VP of Enterprise Sales at Contact.io. Um, Contact.io is an industry leader in indoor environmental location and occupancy services using Bluetooth Low Energy, so BLE. Um, we talk a lot about uh, a lot of different topics here today. So we talk about why the smart building market needs disruption. Um, three layers of space intelligence, so spatial awareness, environmental awareness, object awareness, and also how companies can get started using um, and leveraging real-time people, equipment, and space interactions to really help deliver them more business-related outcomes, um, helps with property operations, and um, really helps build a, a better relationship with occupants within those buildings. So we cover a lot of that and a bunch more. But before we get into this episode, if any of you out there are looking to enter the fast-growing and profitable IoT market, but don't know where to start, check out our sponsor, Leverage. Leverage's IoT solutions development platform provides everything you need to create turnkey IoT products that you can white label and resell under your own brand. To learn more, go to iotchangeseverything.com. That's iotchangeseverything.com. And without further ado, please enjoy this episode of the IoT for All podcast. Welcome, Robert, to the IoT for All show. Thanks for being here this week. That's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this conversation. Um, let's start off by having you give a quick introduction about yourself to our audience. Anything relevant from your background experience that would give them a little bit of context on who to listen to? Yeah, of course. Uh, so um, my name is Robert Kowalik. I'm the Vice President of Enterprise Sales here with Contact.io. Um, Contact.io, we are a uh, disruptive leader in the IoT space. Uh, primarily focusing uh, on two strategic markets, um, which would be carpeted uh, spaces, smart buildings, as well as in the world of healthcare. Um, the solution sets that we offer uh, focus on everything from uh, hardware and software, as well as uh, comprehensive um, cloud-based uh, mm -hmm. solutions and APIs to integrate to be able to do practical solutions. So I've been in this space now for about 20 years, uh, back in the days where it was primarily focused around location services and technologies to tell you where stuff is, mm -hmm. uh, and have worked with, uh, industry leaders in every type of, uh, solution sets that are out in the location services marketplaces, uh, primarily in proprietary location technologies within ultra wideband, uh, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, right. LoRa. Um, but for the past, I would say six, seven years, as the market in the in the space of location services started to really pivot towards BLE, um, uh, I was able to adopt uh, and change into this new open standard and to try to create ubiquitous uh, uh, solutions that focused around how things are, not necessarily where they are. So. Okay. That's my background. Fantastic. So you mentioned two areas that the company's kind of focused in, the smart building space and the healthcare space. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit more about how you all play in those areas and maybe connect it to some use cases that kind of bring it full circle so people can kind of see what impact you're having in those industries from a solution standpoint. So from solution standpoints, um, Listen, where, where the world is going, and especially uh, today, uh, we're trying to be able to create uh, more awareness uh, and better workflows that are associated with uh, visibility and mm -hmm. to be able to digitally touch. Um, and specifically, like in smart buildings today, uh, we're trying to move from traditional IoT use cases that... Uh, I have marketed and sold and implemented with uh, many major corporations that have traditionally focused around efficiencies mm -hmm. uh, of putting sensors in uh, that will tell you how a pump is working or how right. an elevator system is working right. to trying to create more of a human element behind uh, solution sets. And therefore, um, I, I see technology now supporting more than just point solutions uh, that a lot of vendors are selling, uh, that okay. you have tons of them behind you, um, right. into focusing more on the human experience and how we actually interact with each other, how we work in a, a workspace or in a healthcare organization. Uh, they're mm -hmm. fundamentally similar. 
uh, how we can create better workflows associated with real data that we can digitally touch mm -hmm. uh, people's location, uh, uh, occupancy, uh, environmental sensing, all of these type of uh, sensing capabilities to create um, uh, a better experience and data that we can capture and capitalize on to be able to improve workflow. Yeah, it, it sounds like it's kind of, from my understanding of and, and experience in this space, it's kind of a natural evolution to kind of that, that coincides with kind of where the industry has been trying to get to with the focus that you all have. So if we kind of focus on the smart building space just for a second, um, mm -hmm. moving from just focusing on efficiency to also to, to actually the experience side, which I'd be interested to hear kind of why you think and and. I guess why you think the market right now, especially in the smart building space, is kind of in need or ripe for disruption is, you know, the tech not has a technology kind of come a long way to allow certain things to be done. Are we thinking about this in a different way now? What is it about the current state of the market that's kind of really primed for disruption to kind of move us from being just focused on efficiency and using IoT to help improve that to actually now the, the human experience side of things? Yeah, and these are great questions. So what we've been seeing, and professionally speaking, um, is a state of a lot of confusion right now. What is the smart office going to be like in the future? And I'm sure that you've probably had guests mm -hmm. talking yep. about uh, post-pandemic responses. Um, but the more that we peel this onion, uh, we realize that a lot of efficiency issues that were uh, engaged in smart buildings is not new. Um <clears throat> when I started to do some analysis, when we're putting our portfolio of solutions specifically about making buildings smarter and more people centric, yeah, uh, we 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 started to look at some uh, studies and analytics that uh, uh, the big five consulting firms uh, and players in the industries. Um, there was a study done by CBRE back in 2015, before okay. anybody could even spell COVID. Uh, this was, uh, studies of, uh, how are their facilities being utilized? And this was done not, uh, from a facility owner's point of view, but actually tenants point of view. Okay. And they started to break down by different, uh, industries and, um, uh, of who their tenants would be. And we found as high as 70% of the space that's in a smart building is empty. Yeah. Um, telecommunications companies, uh, 70%. Uh, wow. building service consulting firms, uh, 65% empty. But even in 2015, you would have people that would be screaming, oh, we need more space, we're busting at the seams. Mm -hmm. And the data doesn't support that. The data so, sh supports that the space isn't being utilized well. Right. And by just being able to improve utilization, um, we will be able to find that uh, uh, we can maximize the square footage and the uh, operators uh, expense to be able to keep these uh, spaces running right. uh, by by utilizing some sensing technologies and to be able to utilize workflows and analytical tools uh, to be able to create better work environments. Mm -hmm. Now, since the pandemic, we've become more much more aware on health and wellness and making sure, sure. people are happy. Uh, since the pandemic, uh, since uh, uh, everybody's been working remotely, uh, what the new office is going to be like. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft just did a study where uh, almost 70% of their workforce uh, would prefer to work uh, remotely, uh, come in only when necessary. So okay. it's really changing the the space of the of not only what the office is going to look like, but how it's going to be used. And so traditionally, most of my competitors and companies that I've worked with in the past will be very point and analytical and saying, oh, I can put a PR sensor and tell you where something is. Sure. And then uh, the, the Honeywells or somebody in the HVAC uh, industry will say, we have sensors to be able to tell you environmental controls. But right. nobody really puts it all together into being able to create smarter and healthier workspaces. And this this is a, an area that I think we work very strongly. Um, go ahead. I was going to say, you've mentioned a couple of things that I'd be curious to have you just kind of expand on a little bit. You've talked about kind of the environmental side um, uh, when it comes to evaluating and understanding the space. You've talked about uh, understanding where objects are, so more of an object awareness type feel. And then also just mm -hmm. generally what's going on in the space. So there are a number of different things that can be monitored. Can you kind of break those three kind of layers down a little bit? And I feel like they kind of sum up a lot of 
what we're seeing uh, when it comes to connecting IoT with these buildings and helping improve everything we've been talking about so far? Yeah, for sure. So our value propositions uh, within Contact IO uh, traditionally focus on working with our customers to talk about space intelligence. Okay. Um, there's a lot of buzzwords, but uh, space intelligence is really not just taking a point solution off of, uh, hey, we're going to make your elevators more efficient. We're going to make your lighting cheaper. Uh, we have to take a look at the overall picture. And so when we take a, a holistic view uh, of creating um, solutions that focus around space intelligence, usually it layers into about three different uh, layers. So uh, spatial awareness. How is the space by human beings actually being used? Uh, do we have the space? Are the occupancy and the conference rooms being utilized? Uh, are, the, uh, are there enough breakout rooms that will accommodate the way people generally interact and work? Um, or do we have way too many conference rooms that set four or more people? We shouldn't have uh, twice as many breakout rooms with two and take the boardrooms and keep one for board meetings and then break them into a more collaborative space. So we work with clients to be able to provide technologies and solutions and, and a level of data that will not only take the spatial awareness um, mm -hmm. and also pull in uh, environmental awareness for health and um, uh, operational controls, which also help building managers. Right. And, ob and object awareness, that's our third level, uh, to be able to capitalize on asset utilization and maintenance and things. And when you take a look at this entire space uh, uh, intelligence puzzle, uh, then you can start really making some dramatic changes uh, right. as far as how, how not only tenants, but facility owners and managers can start looking at the space that they have and try to capitalize it on the benefit of both sides. And so um, uh, we work through uh, not only sensors, not only uh, cloud-based services and APIs that integrate into uh, analytical platforms, but that holistic view of space intelligence is what I think really is disruptive today yep. and what makes us different today. Um, and uh, I'm a gray hair guy. I've been in this game for 20 years. Um, and back in the day when I started, a lot of this technology is not necessarily new. Sure. Wireless sensing, temperature, uh, telemetry, it's been around for 25 years, 30 years. Yep, right. Um, but to be able to do it on open-based standard networks, um, you'll be surprised how many of your viewers uh, may already have IoT networks in place. Uh, within their facilities. Uh, if they're working with Cisco or Meraki, uh, new generation of access points, they have an IoT network. Uh, they may not be utilizing it to its capability, but they have one. If uh, they're utilizing uh, smart lighting uh, with BLE-based um, uh, uh, controllers and gateways built into them, they have ways to be able to uh, automate uh, wayfinding. So this whole new standard where the networks are now becoming IoT centric uh, creates uh, solutions like Contact IO to be able to fit in right. very well and to make them very affordable. That's what I think is probably one of the more compelling um, uh, changes that I've seen over the past 20 years. Sure. Trying to find stuff or people right. uh, necessarily isn't new. Uh, but today uh, you can do this with a variety of customers, which gives... Uh, right the customers an opportunity to choose sure. and not get stuck with a single vendor that's proprietary. Uh, it gives them an opportunity to democratize the way that they're doing their spend, which uh, mm -hmm. forces us as vendors to compete. And the price point on uh, a lot of these technologies over the past 20 years have become to the point now you cannot not do it because right. uh, you can't afford it. So, so then take me through how companies can really get started leveraging these technologies um, to deliver business outcomes, whether they're property operators or focus more on maybe the, the occupant side of things. What, what is it that companies and people listening to this can do to get started in um, implementing or leveraging this technology to achieve those types of goals in this building setting? 
Um, I think the first thing that they, everyone should do is uh, to take a, a, a big cup of coffee and sit down and collaborate with some of uh, their coworkers okay. and, um, and discuss, do you think that our facilities being run the way it should? Do you think right. our space is optimized? Um, you have to be able to take a look honestly and introspectively uh, to be able to see um, what can I do within the four walls of this box to be able right. to create a better work environment? And what are we doing to be able to keep our employees and staff from a human perspective happy and not on LinkedIn looking for new jobs uh, <laughs> and for them to be able to be effective uh, as we move through this uh, century to become uh, more successful? Sure. Um, the, the technologies that, uh, companies that have in place, uh, if they don't have everything that they're, that would optimize space intelligence, uh, there's companies like us that would be very happy to consult right. and talk to them. Uh, okay. What are your goals? How are you managing your occupancy? What are you doing, uh, with emergency response? How are we doing conference room, uh, optimization scheduling? Um, is your environmental awareness up to par? Do you have anything? We can walk through very simple questions to try to steer uh, the, the thinking of our clients into being able to understand what's, a, what's out there and what's available. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then we try to build out solutions. And most of our solutions aren't necessarily just contact AO. This isn't an advertising pitch. Uh, the solutions are trying to be able to take something that's scalable and replicable and to be able to go across an entire environment and to be able to hit the, the, the pain points and needs uh, where our clients today uh, may not even be aware that they could optimize. Um, but if they were able to take a look at some of the numbers of where uh, other companies that are a little more forward thinking, have been able to optimize uh, the ROI is staggering. Okay. Yeah, I think it's interesting because a lot of the times I've had conversations, even taking out just the the um, the focus on the smart building space, it just seems like there needs to be more emphasis put on the early planning stages before they anything gets implemented or discussed. Because the more prepared they are, and the more they understand kind of what they are looking to solve, the more companies like yours can come in and help explain what can actually be done and what's possible because there is some kind and oftentimes a separation or a difference in understanding as to what is actually possible and what they want and i think that causes lots of frustration in the development process for number of guests i've had on the podcast is talk about how it's just you know the earlier we can kind of set the expectation and manage that the better things are going to be but if companies don't come to the table with clearly understanding what they're doing. It's, it's really, or what they plan to do or like to do. It's very difficult to get off on the right foot and really set this up for success. Exactly. Um, I, my phone is very busy. Uh, yeah. And with specifically now that um, most of the, the key um, uh, big network players that have got into the IOT game and we work very closely with Cisco. Sure. And uh, getting calls all the time. Hey, I uh, just bought all these APs. What can I do with it? Um, yeah. What can you do with it? There's a lot of things we can do with it. Uh, what are your pain points? Right. Well, you know, we want to just be able to tell you uh, where people are. Oh, well, very good. That's very simple to do. Uh, we put a badge. Uh, we can create some um, uh, API streams that can feed back into a security system. I'll tell you what kind of people who are. Are. Yeah. But is that really what the pain point is in your organization? Well, I don't know. Right. I'm in IT. Right. Uh, and right. I don't and, and, and I don't really work with the line of business. I right. think what's what's really important, and I think it's obviously getting there because uh as these IoT networks are becoming more ubiquitous and they're becoming part of uh network strategy, uh the IT organizations are now uh engaged with line of business sure. uh, to be able to support needs. And sure. traditionally, that was a very hard puzzle to fit. If mm -hmm. I was selling a gadget that I only spoke to IT, I don't mm -hmm. care what a facility manager needs, right? He's sure. not my customer. Right. Um, but now that IT is making decisions that have implications that can work with these facility managers or tenants of how to be able to capitalize on a better experience for their employees or tenants, uh, you will end up finding that... 
their goals are the same. Uh, yeah. It's just that they've never spoken to each other. Sure. sure. And driving everything just through an IT decision. Um, in my professional career, I've never met an IT uh, CIO or director uh, that's ever been looking for a new project. These sure. guys are very busy. The fact that whatever they're doing right now with their existing networks provides line of business so that you don't have to put a proprietary network out. Absolutely. Um, it, it creates just a different value proposition that everyone can win yep. and put a feather in the IT guy's cap that he did something other than just uh, upgraded to the latest version <laughs> of an operating system. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, mean, I, I, to I totally follow. Absolutely. So, um, a, a at the, end, at the end of the day, we want to take a look at how buildings are really being used. Are they being uh, used efficiently? And to be able to create a stream uh, through those three layers of mm -hmm. uh, those three layers where we're looking at spatial awareness, environmental awareness, object awareness, and to pull all these streams into this big pipe of metadata. And right. it's going to be this metadata layer of all this information coming out of a building that traditionally nobody's ever had. Okay. And once we have this big metadata layer of, once you have data, oh, well, then you can actually start making decisions on facts, not just making right. guesses. Right. Absolutely. No, that, that's, that's fantastic. I really appreciate these insights. It's, it, it's very clear kind of when you articulate kind of exactly what's happening in the space and why it's so important. It's just getting companies to really follow and understand the value is, is kind of the, the big key for sure. Um, as we kind of wrap up here, I wanted to kind of bring it back to the company itself and ask what's what's happening on, um, I guess, what should we as an audience be on the lookout for over the next number of months? Is there anything exciting kind of happening in the space that you're looking forward to, to seeing that um, we should be we should be kind of paying attention to? Um, what you're going to be seeing uh, specifically from what Contact is delivering, uh, as well as kind of the industry, uh, I think you're going to see adoption of being able to create uh, more of that metadata layer of lots of sensors, uh, but to be able to do it amazingly simply, right? Sure. Uh, uh, going in with uh, a technology from one of the big five uh, HVAC and controls or security system companies and ripping up ceilings and putting cables through, those are that was yesterday. Um, based on the world of Bluetooth low energy and wireless right. sensing and battery powered sensors, um, we are uh, very, very busy with um, creating very rapidly deployable IoT solution sets that capture all these workflows and data uh, to um, very large uh, environments. What yeah. you're going to start seeing, I, I would say over the next year, Okay. Uh, is that uh, the little guy can do it too. Yeah. And so uh, I'm not just talking to uh, the big financial institutions in New York that uh, yeah. have lots of money uh, right. or the biggest healthcare providers in the world. Um, this technologies and solutions have become very simple. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, this is kind of revolutionary. It's a bit of a dork thing from an old guy like me. The last uh, five implementations that we've done of scale, um, we had zero field engineering support on site. Wow. Why? Because it just got deployed by themselves. Everything was pre provisioned, it was working through the network. They had a couple guys that uh, were within a corporation that could go uh, mount these devices, pull them out of a box, scan a barcode, it would be all cloud based, and poof, it's just working. Yep, yep, and yep. With, within two days, you're capturing data and you're starting to get analytics. You can tell me, hey, uh, it looks like uh, our four-person conference rooms are used 60% uh, of the time by one person. Mm. Uh, maybe we change. Uh, sure. Hey, the boardroom uh, last week had an occupancy of 2% and 50% of the time is with two people and it could sit 16. Right. right, uh, right this, exactly. kind of, th this kind of data is very simple and easy to do now. Yep. And by making it simple and, and accessible, you get the adoption curve way, way, yep. way up. Um, Makes sense. So for me yep. to pilot with somebody, it's very simple. I can send them a test kit with a few sensors and, we can and start access stuff. to the cloud yep. and they're grinding out. So yep. that's where you're going to see. Because traditionally, everything that I've done in the past, 
I would have uh, 30 days with the professional services and labor and cabling and then spectrum analyzers and uh, futzing around. Yep. Those days are gone. Those days Absolutely. are gone. And for our audience out there who wants to learn more about the company, stay up to date, um, follow up with any questions, what's the best way to do that? Uh, Contact.io okay. is uh, our website. Uh, please peruse uh, our solution and our value proposition message. And um, uh, contact us through uh, the, the, the forms, depending on okay. what you're looking at. And I yep. will make sure uh, that one of our uh, trained pros uh, will reach out to you right away. Okay. And uh, we will engage. Like I said Sounds before, uh, this is a journey. Um, and you don't have to take the full journey right away. It's baby steps. Uh, yep. But there's ways for us to be able to support you right away. Fantastic. Well, Robert, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. The insights you shared today were fantastic. I think our audience is going to get a ton of value out of this. Um, and, and thanks again for being here. Yeah, thank you very much. You guys have a good day. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching that episode of the IoT for All podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, please click the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to hit the bell notification so you get the latest episodes as soon as they become available. Other than that, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.